little more to the light. to attend again. I can't. Mm. I leave Bonn tonight for Vienna. What is your profession, sir? Musician. Musician? <laughs> you may need to change it. Music. Yes. That chap thinks you're a spy, writing down what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you're Herr von Beethoven, aren't you? A fan. A fan. Beethoven, not fan. I'm Flemish, not German. I beg your pardon. I heard you played the Brenny's house last winter. You'd be a great loss to Bonn. No, I shan't be gone forever. Aren't you assistant court organist there or something? I've got leave to study under Josef Haydn for a year. Under Haydn? If he lasts that long. He's pretty ancient, you know. <laughs> Still, you're lucky as a court musician to be able to afford Haydn. I deserve it. Oh, I guess so. Anyhow, the elector's paying. Oh, the elector. Well, actually, you see what he spent on food. <laughs> he won't miss it. Have you been to Vienna before? It's five years ago. I had a few lessons with Mozart. Not for long. It's a beautiful place. And the music. Yes. If a musician can't fulfill himself there, he never will. Not like Bonn. New ideas, new directions. They're accepted for what they are in Vienna. New ideas in music, you mean? Any new ideas. Political, scientific, intellectual. I didn't realize you chaps were interested in all those things. I've well, spoken like a true German. You remind me of when Haydn visited our beloved Bonn. You remember they gave him a civic banquet or something? He asked the mayor whether he'd heard his greatest work, the creation. Do you know what he replied? I'm not sure. Whistle it. <laughs> I'm sure there's no cause for alarm. Be careful. What is it? What? It's an Austrian guard post. Oh, thank God for that. The soldiers, Papa? Yes. Our soldiers? Yes. What? On our side. What's happening? Koblenz has fallen. It's what the hell? I've been to ten this morning. Dear God. But go right through Koblenz. Yes. Our route the Vienna Road passes right through it. What is he doing? Where is he taking us now? We've been ordered out of the area immediately. The French are expected to cross the Rhine at this point at any moment. And I think we should face the fact that they may already have overrun the countryside around Koblenz. Which leaves only one course of action. What? What is that, sir? Ride straight up to Koblenz. Tell the French who we are and where we're going and ride on with their blessing. Oh, you can't have a boy. I really can't see a victorious revolutionary army who've been marching all night and fighting all day for weeks now, troubling themselves about us. Whereas if we try and make a run for it through their lines, they'll almost certainly shoot us down. I agree. I'll tell the coachman next time we stop. Certain. Hey? About this plan of yours. I'm certain about people. Anyway, you agreed. I saw no alternative. It's still lunatic. But these French, they're not savages. They're liberators following an ideal. The old empire's crumbling like a rotten biscuit. It was repressive, suffocating, ignorant. All that will go. At the shock of war, the people of Europe will rise, overthrowing the tyrant and setting up government. I thought I heard you say it was one of these ignorant tyrants who's paying for your lessons with Haydn. Yes. Well, that's different. Extraordinary fellow. Young, that's all. But if he 
eccentric, but what were they asking you for addresses of dancing masters in Vienna or something else? How cravats are worn there now. <laughs> he certainly has a very starry-eyed view of the place. He told me he was writing down my exact height in millimetres and sending it by night balloon to Herr General Bonaparte. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. It's a new era in human history, a page being turned. Already it's happened in the Americas, now it's sweeping across Europe. Everywhere thrones will fall and be replaced by republics, where men can be noble and free. Have you ever seen a battle? What? Have you ever seen a battle? The refugees, the children. I don't quite, too. Uh... No, you don't, do you? Nous allons à Vienne. Pour papier? Merci. Bon voyage. Not out yet. with Theresa von Brunswick, you know. Half her sister? I saw them together yesterday when I went round to his flat. She was there, and he looked... Oh! <laughs> I start lessons with him tomorrow, you know. He leans over you when he's playing and breathes. <laughs> Is Haydn all right? And he's only 26, isn't he clever? <laughs> and such a dear. And he's risen from absolutely nothing, you know, in only three years. Everyone's saying he'll take the place of poor dear Mutter. They wouldn't say that if they'd heard what he writes. Writes, General? Uh, you mean composers? You've not heard any? I didn't know he'd started composing. Awful clatter, if you ask me. Bang, bang, no tune to it. Nothing like this.
Come on, let's get out of here. You can't just... What? You can't just march out of here. Why you... can't I? Having to play this dreadful... You've got to talk and mix a little, Ludwig, not behave like a savage. Bloody hell. Look, there's the Unger Zapati girl. Go make yourself pleasant to her. What is it? Something important? Yes. Where? Later, then. Huh? Oh, no, 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 he never learned anything from me. We didn't hit it off at all well. I don't really like him, you know. No self-control. Like having a great bull in the house. And he's got all those dangerous Republican ideas, too. Thirty years ago, he wouldn't have been allowed inside the door of a noble household because of them. Let alone us to play there. Ah, the times are changing now, though. <laughs> yes, I suppose they are. Uh, I suppose one must accept that. This liberalism of the Snofskys goes too far. Musicians should eat in the servants' hall like they always have done. Oh, the prince is very kind-hearted. Leftish, you mean? It makes me uncomfortable to have a fellow who's just been playing the fiddle at me suddenly asking me to pass the mustard or something. Well, Beethoven's not on anybody's staff. Uh, on the staff? How did he live? Oh, teaching, I believe, that sort of thing. He did start out with something from the Elector of Cologne, but that soon dried up. Dear Prince, what an enjoyable afternoon. Oh, you're not leaving, Countess. I'm afraid I must. We're all at Derasumovskis tonight, aren't we? <laughs> this eternal round of each other's houses, listening to all these new compositions, new orchestras, new players. Such fun, but so exhausting. <laughs> Oh, that clever young man of yours. Yes. yes, he is talented, isn't he? No doubt of it. Only please, don't let him spend too much time composing. After all, it's as a player he's made his reputation. Let him stick to it. Look, I'd better go and have a word with the old man. Till tomorrow, then? Well, Papa Haydn, and how are you? Getting on very well without you, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Come on. One of these unfortunate things. He's off. Sort of That's modern manners, I suppose. You're too kind to him. I know you. You have a soft heart. Ah, but he is exceptional. And one must do what one can. Oh, you're not leaving, Herr General. My apartment or yours? Mine. You sure there's supper? Oh, no, mine, mine. Anna Strasser, 21. Uh, uh, no, I've moved. Uh, Oldenstrasse. Again? Oldenstrasse, 43. 43 Oldenstrasse. That's the third time this year. They used to listen to me at the other place. How do you mean? Listen, you know. No privacy. When I was playing, the people in the rooms around used to listen. How did you know? I knew. Especially the loud bits. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really feel quite prehistoric, you know. I'm preferring to eat at a table with a knife and fork. <laughs> I enjoy your little musical gatherings enormously, Princess. It is just the eating I find a trifle avant-garde. <laughs> I see. Our great Mogal bounced off again without a word. Uh, I think he was trying to catch the uh, Ertmann girl. The Ertmann? I thought it was the Guichardi. That's the trouble. He's always in love, and generally to the highest degree. But it seems to be a different girl each week. That's it. That's just what I'm saying. All that emotion all the time. It's too much, don't you agree? Oh, he is what he is. He's enjoying his success. We mustn't begrudge him that. And perhaps, perhaps it is we who are wrong with our generations of desperate self-control. Hmm? Oh. Also, it means his friends have to put up with so much from him. Those that survive may be few, but they are exceptionally loyal. You know Lishnovsky's offering me an annuity. As a performer? No, no. So I can be free to do whatever I like. Well, that's wonderful. 600 guilders a year. What do you think? Oh. Still, they're far from rich, you know. No, oh, but I shall be better off than I was. At least I shall be free. To do what? It's good of him, isn't it? Perhaps he won't be quite so rude at his little salons in future. Eh? He can be pretty brusque, you know. I won't suck up. Yeah, but people talk to you, you pay not the slightest notice. You don't seem to even hear them. Are you religious? What? Well, if you... Oh, well, no, it doesn't matter. Forget it. The extraordinary thing is that if one is to believe the idle gossip, which I always do, and with religious fervour, <laughs> he makes conquests where many a seasoned Romeo has failed. Anyone of his intelligence who runs from one woman to another, like he does, must be dreadfully unhappy. Unhappy? I don't follow. Unhappy about what? I don't know. Yes. 
Yes, I could be. Yes, I could explain a lot of things. Oh, not only charming and beautiful, but wise, too. <laughs> Why couldn't I have met someone like you 40 years ago? Where is your wife, dear Papa? Oh, last time I heard she was in Rome, ensconced with a cardinal. <laughs> you know, she once used one of my symphonies for curling papers. Oh. The only copy. <laughs> Do you think we could persuade her to use one of Herr Beethoven's new works? <laughs> that would make her hair fall out, and that would delight me. <laughs> There's a lamp over here. Shall I light it? Psst. This lamp. Oh, light it, will you? Plenty of room. I haven't arranged anything yet. I'd make you some coffee. Oh, that's all right. Don't bother. What? I said no thank you. You need somebody to run a place like this. I don't know how you managed before. A servant? We can afford one now. But quickly, before they all enlist. The war's going badly. There's a big recruiting drive on. Let me find you someone. But he'd be here when I was working. Well, depends how he arranges his hours. You could marry, of course. <laughs> you can't arrange your wife's hours. You're stuck with her. How much do you pay for this place? I don't know. No. 30 guilders, something like that. 30? 20, then. I don't remember. What's that, a week, is it? A month or a year? He did say. Too high, anyway. That's why all these ghastly lessons, teaching. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God I shall be able to give them up now. Oh, well, that knocks my little scheme on the head. Scheme? Well, I was going to ask you if you'd take my sister on as a pupil. Oh, no, no, no more pupils. All those dreadful, spotty girls. Well, Josephine is very beautiful. Josephine? My other sister. I didn't know you had another sister. You haven't met her. No, she's... She's not been in society much lately. She's a widow. Her husband died last year, leaving her with two little children. Oh. oh see her, at any rate. Look. What is it? Yours? Your work? Some of it's drafts, notes, that sort of thing. Yes, but what is there here? Two symphonies, some sonatas, a trio... Piano concertos, a lot of other stuff. I had no idea. I... All of it unperformed. Oh, no. Some of it's what you heard already, but most of it. Boom, 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 boom. I showed some to Haydn. <laughs> what happened? Oh, he didn't like it. <laughs> you know the terrifying thing about Haydn? In his day, he was a musical revolutionary, a daring innovator. Now look at him. The year I studied under Joseph Haydn was the most boring of my life. I don't know how I survived. The same goes for all those other teachers. Albrechtsberger, Forster, Schenk, Dahl, Dahl, a lot of them. Still, that's Vienna for you. And the Viennese. Horrible place. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. Mind you, there's no risk of them ever joining the revolution. Not while they can stuff themselves on black ale and sausage. <laughs> Though they might cut up nasty if they ran short of ice cream. <laughs> but you're not going to give up performing. What? I was only... I can't keep up with you. Are you well? No. No, I'm not. What is it? Headache, bowels, but it's not that. Are you eating properly? Here. Over there. Again. Oh, wait. Now. Again. Again. I'd be grateful if you could find out the names of the best physicians in Vienna for the ear. I've been unable to bring myself to do so. But you've not seen anybody about this? Not since Bonn. And it's getting worse? Month by month. There's a reason, you see. There must be a thing like this. It's not an accident. You won't tell anyone about this. I have enemies. 
<laughs> the deaf musician. <laughs> Hoffman, sir. What? Count von Brunswick sent me. My name's Hoffman. Oh, yes, a servant. Yes, come in. Uh, Fräulein Unger's a Batier. This is her, um... Hoffman. Hoffman. Uh, well, um, Hoffman, you've not enlisted. No, sir. Good, you're engaged. Don't you want to discuss salary, sir? Do you? <laughs> no, sir. Good. Kitchen's through there. Make us some coffee. Answer the door, quickly. <laughs> We're not usually introduced to servants. Who did you say wrote that? My uncle. He's a genius. It's the most appalling piece I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Don't disturb him. I give him this letter, please. Some addresses he asked my brother for. There is another matter, but that can wait. Hoffman! Hoffman! Yes, What are you doing? I didn't want to disturb you. Have you been listening? No. Mm -hmm. People never listen when you want them to. Well, I couldn't help a little. What? Come in. I'm Josephine Dine. Yes, I can see that. Franz's sister. How do you do? Hoffman, coffee. Well, I mustn't stay long. Just one cup. Just one little cup. You have a visitor. A pupil. She's just going. Uh, Countess Daim, Fräulein Ungersabatier. Franz von Brunswick's sister, you know. Yes, we have met. Well, till Friday, then. Oh, Friday, yes, ten o'clock. Good. Oh, uh, may I keep... Uh... Of course. <laughs> well. You want to work? No, I want to talk. But I can't give you lessons. Franz said you wanted lessons. Well, I can't do that. Hoffman! I can't find the things. Where are your cups? In the cupboard. Oh, look. You want to lose your eyes. Women have been here for five minutes. Coffee for the ladies. Do I play it well? Your fingering here. Look. No. That's better. All right, all right. Now let me come. Wrist down. Like that. Particularly the thumb. Practice that. Oh, yes. I have two most talented children. Oh, no, 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 no. You must understand. I must get on with my own work. I'm sure they're very charming. Oh, they're not. They're little swine, but they do play well. Oh, well, it's not been easy for them, their father dying so suddenly. We're still in mourning, as you see, though I'm thinking of discarding it soon. When the 12 month is up? Oh, no, it's barely five months. But it's not good for the children. They're naturally high-spirited. Won't it upset people if you discard it so soon? People need upsetting. At any rate, will you come and see the waxworks? The what? Will you give me my next lessons at my home? I have quite a good forte piano, and you can see the waxworks for nothing. Waxworks? <laughs> my husband ran a waxworks. 
We had to do something. We had no money. Waxworks? I'm sure, Franz. Would have Monsters, you. kings and queens, animal, tableau, that sort of thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Copy. The Countess brought this. Addresses, she said. <laughs> Friday, <laughs> 10 o'clock. Bonaparte's wide sweep across northern Italy must be aimed at Venice and through to the Adriatic. Austria has been deprived of every one of her Italian states. Sardinia has fallen in a campaign which in military terms was spectacularly brilliant. And it cannot be long now before the rest of Italy is overrun, at least as far down as Rome. It is suggested that your Imperial Majesty draws the attention of the nobility to the need of their rejoining their regiments as soon as possible after the conclusion of the season. Also that we make inquiries into the merits of national conscription. The revolutionary forces have made far greater strides than anyone could have anticipated, and their position, viewed upon the map of Europe, seems to indicate a gigantic pincers movement centered upon Vienna. Mozart. Yes. The greatest musician that has ever lived. He gave me lessons, you know, when I was 17. And Vienna, which he enriched so much with his genius, let him die in dingy poverty and buried him in a common pauper's pit. I went looking for his grave when I came back. There's nothing to be seen. Nothing. It's not even a very good likeness. It's a death mask. Yes. My husband took it. And there's the clothes he died in. And they come and see this now he's dead. In their hundreds. A sublime Mozart. They hate any man of genius. He's too disturbing. And he shows up their own mediocrity too clearly. They're appreciative to you. At the moment. Look at the thing. It's pretty. Genius isn't pretty squealing in a trap a sheer naked defenselessness inconceivable to other men there's no will no choice in it you lie stretched out between what humanity is and what it could become twisted and racked between those two things singing out oh the greatest wisdom like he did he gave us music and then when you're barely 35 35 just beginning Of course, it's not at all like that, really. It's bloody hard work. <laughs> your husband, your husband must have been a remarkable man. Oh, he made a lot of money abroad, making casts and things, and put it all into this. He married me partly to try to slip back into his social plane, but they wouldn't have us. It's the children I feel sorry for. Yes. Though now he's dead, they are being accepted slowly. And you? I dare say that will come. He, he will alter all that. Bonaparte. When he takes Vienna, our moribund social order. Though anyone who spends their evenings in the company of Genghis Khan, Charlemagne, Marie Antoinette. <laughs> and Pius the Fourth in the larder. Pretty well connected, <laughs> huh? Not doing at all badly. I suppose after a while you must get used to it. Well, it was strange at first, having Tamburlaine watching you over breakfast. Or finding St. Augustine under the bedclothes. What? The children. Oh, huh? yes. We're replanning it. All these are going into the lower corridor out there. You and Franz. What? Oh, yes. He's coming round later. Oh. Can you stay? The children will be back from school any minute. Stay and talk with them. They've heard so much about you. Though you may find them a bit shy. One and two and bam, ba dum, ba dum, tiddle. Do little, do little. Ba dum, ba dum. Do little, do little. Ba dum, ba dum. Do little, do little. Do little, do little. Do little, do little. Do little, do little. On earth. I'm sorry, we were we just... We were playing a symphony, <laughs> Mama, and here Beethoven was conducting us. I should just about think he was. He's very good. You two can get straight back into bed. Just because Herr Beethoven was kind enough... Oh, I'm sorry, I seem to have got to court. Um, thank you. He's a very good conductor, Mama, especially in the loud bits. You two can just go straight to sleep. And if there's another word from either of you, there'll be real trouble. Understand? It's a long night. Can he come again? What? Can hear Beethoven come again? 
We like him. Do you indeed? <laughs> well. Franz is downstairs. Franz? He has some news. You will come? Yes. Dearest Baron Max Blasher. Good be. How are you? How are you? How are our wife? Oh, you. Is Josephine... Just coming down, dearest Count. Just quelling a small riot. Nothing to worry about. Then before she comes... I'm afraid they got a little overexcited. Please, tell me what happened. What? Well... Those specialists. Oh. You've been? Uh. Yes. Yes. And? And what do they know? Time. It's a matter of time, they say. You haven't mentioned? Or to anyone? No. What do you mean, time? Just a few years. It will be gradual. But in the end, the loss of hearing will be total. That's what they say. All of them? It's due to the condition of my abdomen, they say, that I cannot hear. So I have medicines, oils, greases, disgusting things. Also, they've advised me to move into the country to rest my powers of hearing as much as possible. I have been considering a move for some time. Out of Vienna? Into the country, away from all this, to work. I don't know whether I shall go yet. I am considering. It's quite unreal, you know. How many years? Four. Five, perhaps. Certainly by the time I'm 35. Do you think? Could we? What? Turn that thing off. Well. Are they asleep? I very much doubt it. Really, Ludwig. And you look so guilty. He's... Are you going up to say goodbye, Franz? In a minute. What? I'm joining my regiment. You're rejoining my regiment. I leave tonight for Eichstadt. There's a huge offensive planned on the northern front. You'd heard that Mainz fell yesterday. We must defend the existing order, whatever its shortcomings, because that is better than anarchy, and anarchy is what Bonaparte is producing. No. Yes, his Italian campaign is the a... The Italian campaign has shown the man to be a political genius. We already knew he was a military one. Of all these rotten states he's conquered, subservient to the empire, simply drained of their wealth to subsidize the nobility of Vienna, who never went near them. He's turned them into new republics, self-governing. Every man a free citizen with responsibility, not the poor, ignorant wretches they were before. He's new man, Franz, creating a new world in our lifetime, where men can speak openly and freely and breathe and hold up their heads. Dear God, what world do you live in? This one! One of the children calling out. Anyhow. Ludwig. No. I have to play at Lishnovsky's tonight. We shall be there. Respect my views. You will come and see the children again? Oh, I regret. I am moving into the country. There is work that must be done. While the... While... The... Will you let me... Old Count Minoski heard him play. He hated it. Did he? It was so strong, that's what he said. It was features immense. You'd have trouble telling which was the so-called music and which were the guns of the revolution. <laughs>
Don't fret. Why have you never got married? I've had better things to do. Don't you get lonely? No. What? I've plenty of friends. Yeah. I did try it once, actually. We lived very happy for about six months. What happened then? I didn't fancy her no more. Cheese? Where is she now? Roasting. Huh? Eh? Dead? Got it over the head with a bottle. An archdeacon done it. <laughs>
might get called up soon, you know. What? I might get called up. They're calling up the unmarried men. Conscription calls being formed all over the place. The high ups, you know, they're getting windy. And you'd fight? I'd have to, wouldn't I? The defender system's so diseased. Well, it's that or get married again. Hmm. You'd have to fight too, you know. No. You'd have to. I'd refuse. They'd shoot you. That is if... If I don't... Beethoven, are you all right? I can't see properly. What do you want? I brought you these books. You said you wanted them the last time... the last time we met. Goethe, Schiller. I can't see properly. Thank you for the books. Are you all right? On the table. Let me know what they cost. They're mine. I'm lending them to you. We were all wondering... Franz, all right? As far as I know. Is that it? Well, what? Went away like this. I thought I'd made it plain. Want to be left alone? Yes. I don't see if I made it any too clear. Are you working? Yes. Well, I won't take up a moment of your time. Do you mind if I. Look, there's no Is point. Is Hoffman still with you? What? Hoffman. Is he still with you? He comes in the evenings to make me a meal. He doesn't believe in washing up and dusting, I see. He's away at the moment. Oh. Visiting a sick aunt. Oh. I meant to have a clear up and tidy up, you know. But, well, I didn't. I didn't find the time in the end. No. I like to live simply. What? I didn't speak. No. What? I know. I know you didn't. What Can't are you it... working on? The symphony. For Bonaparte and what he stands for. Is it finished? No. How did you find me? Oh, asking locally. You're not easy to hide, you know. I started at your old apartments in the city. You haven't given them up. Mm. Ludwig, you still pay the rent on them. Did you forget? No. You see? Sunny. You're out of mourning. You noticed. How different you look. Bonaparte. Beethoven. What will be written in between? <laughs> There's some more of it. <laughs> All those bits of paper. It's different to anything written before. It's a new kind of music for a new kind of world. You don't say that with the conviction you used to. You know there's been an armistice. The fighting stopped for a while. Anyhow... Is there anything you want? Anything you need? I want to be left alone. Ludwig. Please, I'm all Stefan right. Stefan is ill. Stefan. He's asking for you. Will you come and see him? No. Look. 
Ludwig. Forgive me, Aunt. No. No, I'm delighted. Franz. How are you? Is he upstairs? In his room. Is he? Better, but still not well. You did say. I'm sorry. Asking for me. The fever's gone. He's so much better. I had no idea. Oh, how could you? If I'd known he was so ill. Yes. Why didn't you... Couldn't you... Well, your work. He's a beautiful boy. Look at him. Clear skin. Why was he asking for me? He's very fond of you. Why? Why shouldn't he be? And he wanted me here. Yes. I didn't want to wake him. No, of course not. Could you stay? Sleeping. He's over the crisis. One of my brothers had pleurisy like that when we were children. The breathing was just like that. You look at them, they're so vulnerable, lying asleep. Well, ah, Franz. Well, are you back or didn't you go? Oh. I didn't know. A bullet? Through the palm, out here. Broke some little bones here. But can you... And would it be all right? They can't say yet. Unscathed. Shall we... I want to talk to Beethoven. All your grand gestures working for a new world. I saw men standing with their guts hanging out and screaming. I'd never seen it before. You never have. I saw a child no older than Stefan with his head blown clean off. No new world is worth that. Of course it's horrible when the innocent... Words, suffer. Ludwig, words. You've not seen... You must look at the wider issues as well. That's the trouble. That's exactly what you've been doing and nothing else. Birth is not pretty. It's bloody and savage. And it can only be achieved by force. In this case, the enlightened will of one man. My dear Ludwig, he will go the way of all the others. The pattern is so old. A man gains power, an idealist. Because of his idealism, he finds to transform the world, he has to adopt more and more the sort of methods he has overthrown. He finishes up indistinguishable from the tyrant he rebelled against in the first place. No. It's true, Ludwig. Read history. If that was so, it would negate everything I'm doing. And you can hear it is not negated. That is what my music is about. It's already happening. Look at this so-called armistice. Look what's happening. As a sop to us for taking away our Italian states, Bonaparte has proposed that we carve up the defenceless state of Venice. A state without an army, innocent, independent, a state that's had no part in the war at all. And Austria has agreed. Deplorable, yes, barbaric. But your idealist proposed it. Oh, we don't know his reasons. Just because you and I. It's a temporary expedient. Everyone knows that the war will soon break out again. <laughs> yes, of course. But there is an overwhelming hunger to make a good world. I grant you. So it must be possible. The Almighty would not set us a problem like this if there were no answer to it. The Almighty moves in ways so mysterious at times, I doubt if he's only command of his senses. <laughs> it's true. Look at your disability. What? What possible reason could there be for such a grotesque thing? You, of all men. What? You must have... You're ill. No, I... Tell me. I'm sorry, Ludwig. It doesn't matter. My hearing... My hearing is going. I'm going deaf. Both ears. I shall be totally deaf by the time I'm 35. There's a reason for it. Something I'm being made to learn. Everything in my past has been preparing me for what I must do. I lie awake and I go over my life. I watch things falling into place, gathering momentum. And I try and see how my disability could be part of it. As a child catching a chill after a swim. Or my father striking me here when he was drunk. Or an insect that crawled into my ear one summer's night so I awoke screaming. Why? Why? Why should a great hunger be implanted in me? A genius to achieve something most specific? A task that I have to fulfill that it is my life's function to fulfill without a shadow of a doubt and at the same time be endowed with all the powers and skills and functions to the highest degree necessary to carry it through, save one, my supreme function, the noblest part of my being, my hearing. And moreover, not to be deprived of it until I'm well along the course. Why should men be allowed to glimpse at paradise when they cannot enter it? 
you know what I truly believe to be the worst thing in the world? To have a passionate desire, a desperate need to achieve something, so that it becomes an all-consuming passion, but to lack the actual ability to achieve it. Oh, I've seen it so often in young musicians, writers and many others. Their souls burn, but they have no genius, no skill, and they are in agony that they fail. Now, why should this be? It is in them without a doubt. They burn with it, just as it is in man. Will you agree? It is in us to create such a world. We burn with it like they do. He knows that. He sees it. Bonaparte. That's why he fights. But deafness breaks in. Venice, that child. And your music is so full of joy. But it is there in people. We are capable. Though I did read something quite recently that haunts me, though I cannot believe. I read that the people of southern Italy capture singing birds to cage and to keep their song more full and beautiful, they blind them with red-hot needles. And do you know, they stream with song. Now, why should this be? Why? Can you conceive that the Almighty could do this to man? Could do this to me? So that... So that... Oh, stay with us. Symphony. What? The Bonaparte, is that it? <laughs> no, that's something else. The Bonaparte's finished. Finished? As good as. Oh, that's <laughs> marvellous. When will it be played? I don't know. Can I hear some of it? Will you play me some? No. I'm, I'm leaving it for a while. Leaving it? But why? <laughs> or do you always do that when you finish something? No. Then if it's finished... It has to be left, don't you understand? Just leave it. I don't want to talk about it, all right? Well. I'm sorry. I'm not well. I shouldn't have shouted. You frighten me. Please. All right. Oh, yes. He's a little different at times, but do you like him? Oh, yes. 
He's a great man. And great men are not always easy. Who's that Stefan's talking to? Stefan, come here this minute. Who's there? He says there's been a terrible battle and all our troops are coming back. Troops? They're only a little way behind, back on the road. He says there's been a terrible battle at a place called Hohen something. Hohen Linden? Yes! Hohen Linden. And we've lost Mama. There were so many wounded that they're going to close down the schools in Vienna and use them as hospitals. Coming here, along this road? That's what he said. Anna, get here, Beto. Never mind what he's doing. Go and get him. Oh, can't we stay, Mama, please? You've been ill, my lad. We've got to go. Look, it's going to rain. Listen! There it is again. What is it? Ludwig! Anna, catch it. What is it? There's been a battle. At Owen Linden. Come here. Come by me. Look at me. Well? What time is it? Early. Why did you go away? Oh. It's so cold. I could feel you lying next to me in the night. I curled up your back. It was so warm. And I reached out. Come back. Come back to bed. What is it? Most men in your place would look, well, happy. I am happy. Well, you don't look it. Marry me. No. I am happy. Oh, you're heavy. Marry me or I'll crush the life oh, out of you. Oh, you great bear. Oh, Ludwig, stop it. Oh, my love, my love. You're so alive. Your heart and soul come pouring out. Oh, you're grinning away like a great cat. I've never seen anything so smug. Marry me. No. Why not? You'd be impossible to live with. But I'll tell you what I will do. What? Cook you a proper breakfast later on. A countess? Mm, countesses make very good breakfast. Will you wear a coronet? <laughs> Certainly, if you wish. Yeah, have you got one? I had three, but dime pawned two of them. Will you wear it in bed? Oh, it's so much like to make love to a countess wearing a coronet. I could wear my new ear trumpet. <laughs> you shouldn't be able to move for ironmongery. <laughs> the ear is clanging for miles around. When you were at the window, hmm? you heard me just then, when I woke up. Yes. But I thought... You know, the noises. Sometimes they're less. Even not there at all. Early morning in particular. What noises? It's a whistling noise. A booming, hideous echo in my head. It blots out everything else. It's deafening. Well, then it's not that you can't hear, but that these other noises... Oh, my dear, I didn't think... It doesn't matter. I didn't... I wake up some mornings, I forget I'm deaf. I lie there. Sunny and bright and fresh. So good. Sun streaming in through the window. Dawn. Silence. And then, as I lie there, just slowly at first, 
Like now. Did you say... Huh? Well, that you had something to help? An ear trumpet. Subject of excellent jokes in comic opera. Come and stay when you come back to Vienna. When are you coming? Soon. It's autumn now. Colder. Oh, I like your apartment. It would be very nice if you've got somebody to clean it. You mustn't go. Oh, not yet. No, you mustn't. Not today. You must stay here with me. Oh, the children. We've got a nurse to look after them. They'll be all right. Well. Stay with me. me you're so many things I woke up in the night and they're watching you you were so restless you called out at one point but I couldn't make it out not resting on a rack tell me there aren't the words try if I could put into words I wouldn't need what that thing oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I didn't know there could be so much laughing. What do you mean? In bed. I mean, it's been all the things it has been, but... What are they? No. Please. <laughs> Anyhow, what about the others? What others? Oh, you're notorious. What? What, the Britano girl? Well, I can't remember their names. I'm one of a long line, I know that. Oh, there were nothing. Oh, I dare say. Little chits of things. Mm. But those little chits made you into a pretty good lover. Oh, Ludwig, I didn't mean. What? Oh, my dear, I didn't know. Was I good? Was I? Marry me. Chris. Can you... Still. Outside. Huh? In my head. Perhaps it's in my head. Someone there. What? Out a door. Don't come in. Hoffman. Message from Prince Lishnovsky. Can you please come at once? Herr Hagen is very ill. You here? Yes. They're laying the wounded in the streets. I couldn't get through. Have you seen? Yes. I had no idea. How is he? Oh, he's, uh, he's asleep. He's very tired. Sometimes his mind wanders a little, but mostly he's pretty bright. He's a very difficult patient. He won't undress and he keeps eating all the time. <laughs> I think you should wait till he actually wakes. Yes, of course. What, sir? Uh... Oh, just preparing for when Bonaparte gets closer, you know. Where are you going? Baden, I think, if we have to. Somehow, it doesn't really matter where. And you? You're well, Maria Ludwig? Thank you. Ah, he's awake. Now, uh, now you won't tire him, will you? The doctors say it's only a matter of days, but they haven't told him yet, so... Uh... Someone to see you? What? Oh, my dear Ludwig. Thank you, Princess. My dear fellow, how kind this is, and how very nice to see you. Well, uh, Papa Haydn, how are you? Oh, just a matter of days, I think. But those fool doctors, they don't seem to realise. They think I'm going on forever. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you haven't brought any fruit. Look what people have given me. It's terribly bad for me. But I can't resist it. Well, now, I heard that music for your ballet, Prometheus, the other day. And it pleased me very much. Oh, how kind. How very kind. But it's far from being of the level of your creation. Yes, I know it is. I wasn't suggesting it was. It's very different, isn't it? Oh, we are poles apart, I know. But I was hoping we might find some sort of a, a bridge, eh? We both had marriage troubles, I believe. I made a rotten one. You haven't made one at all. 
Well, that should bring us together a little, shouldn't it? Well, it is possible. What? That widow woman I've been hearing about? Oh, my dear Ludwig, I'm so glad. When's it to be? Oh, we haven't actually um, discussed uh, dates yet. <clears throat> yeah. Well, never mind. At least it means Vienna will be seeing a little more of you. I assume you will be moving back. After the country bumpkin life you've been leading, and where will you live? I've just signed a contract with the Theater and the Wien. It includes a flat over the auditorium. Over the auditorium? Won't that be dreadfully noisy? No, oh, it uh, doesn't matter. I have this. What? Oh. Like this. Yes. Well, I'm sure it helps. Does it help? No. Well, perhaps the man who made it feels proud and happy or something to have made it for you. Yes, he did say something like that. Ah, well, then you see some good has come of it. Now, what else does this contract cover? An opera in the first place. Oh, good. I'm so glad you haven't thrown opera out of the window. What's it about? The revolution. Oh, dear, yes. Well, don't you ever think of anything else? Not often. <laughs> I hear that fellow is getting closer every day. Bonaparte. Each day we wake up is nearer to Vienna than when we went to sleep the night before. That's what someone told me. Chilling thought. I'm glad I shan't be here when he arrives. Now, you disapprove of that, of course, but I can't help it. I was born in another world. Well, I dare say it has run its course. It has grown old and feeble and all the rest of it. But I couldn't bear to see it overthrown. There was something I wanted to tell you. Now, what was it? <laughs> My memory is going. Shall I uh, play something for you? Oh, yes, that would be delightful. I should so enjoy that. Uh, but, uh, Ludwig, please, nothing of yours. I suppose what I'm trying to say is, don't take the charm out of music. Charm is a very valuable thing, you know, a very human thing. And it's not understood by you young musicians. Like style, you mistake it for affectation, and it's not, you know, it's very far from it. With all your revolutions and rebirths of the human spirit and all the rest of it, you won't forget that life is for living, will you? I sound like a moral tract. I believe I do. Forgive me, my mind isn't what it was. I forget things. Do you know I've had the most marvellous life? I've had the luck of the devil. I worked like a slave and done jolly well for myself. <laughs> I've always kept this picture of where I was born. Ah, you've seen it before. Yeah. There's nothing all that wrong with a civilization that lets a creature born in a hovel like that rise up and fulfill himself in his chosen craft in the glittering center of Europe. And he really did glitter, you know, in a way you can't imagine unless you saw it. You know, sometimes I... I think I must be getting silly. I'm so happy. I had a wife who really drove me mad. I've had a tremendous struggle sometimes to work my way up. For years I've been writing symphony after symphony, great solemn masses, the creation. I should be profound and solemn and full of gravitas. Here I am, giggling away like a schoolboy. No sense of occasion at all. <laughs> what, what, what was it I wanted to tell you? I knew it was important because I said to myself... Oh. May I ask you something? The Empress coming at four to see me. Would you pass me my wig? Over there. That's it. 
Thank you. That glass would be a great help. And would you straighten me up a bit? I am glad about the alliance your Corsican hero has formed with the Pope. At least it shows he's ready to start compromising with the old world. My dear fellow, surely you knew? He has formed a concordat with His Holiness not to sweep away the church, corrupt though it may be. In return, I understand, for vast assets of land and treasure for his own personal fortune. Sounds like a sensible man after all. In a way, though, it negates what he's been doing so far. For destruction is only justified if you really are going to substitute something better. Don't you think? This is my best wig, look at it. And they cost so much nowadays, don't they? Oh, I forgot you don't wear one. Still, I can't meet the Emperor in anything less, can I? He's a good man, you know. Old, ill, like me. <laughs> and a bit, uh, a perfect symbol, one can't deny it. <laughs> Ridiculous old man. Oh, and look at these hands. <laughs> Useless things now. <laughs> there now. Am I decent? I certainly feel better. <laughs> now I am ready. A little style, my dear Ludwig. A little style. Come and see me again, won't you? Goodbye. Remember me to everyone. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> What is it, Ludwig? Tell me what happened. What did he say to you? The band goes over the head thus. Now let go of the horn. Let go. There, you see? Look. Take a look in the mirror. Yeah, now that's not so bad, is it? Better than the other one. Much better fit altogether. Oh, and if I might make a suggestion, some of my former clients who have uh, suffered from the same affliction as yourself have found considerable ease in the use of conversation books. Uh, that is to say, blank books, always available at hand, uh, on which can be written whatever remarks are desired for the afflicted party to read. Uh, most useful device, I'm sure you will agree. I have some here. Let me give them to you. Uh, I'll uh, put them on the bill. Oh, what are you doing? I have to go out for a while. Well, leave it on. In the street? Yes, of course, at all times. Uh, now, uh, put your hat on. Oh, come now. You'll soon get used to it. He is working, as you hear. We will wait. We haven't long. We will wait, nevertheless. You are leaving? Yes. This afternoon. We just looked in to say au revoir and to advise him to, uh, to be careful. In what way? The police are conducting a, a secret investigation. There is a file. Aunt Ludwig? So I am informed. For his beliefs? I imagine so. But he believes no more than a very great many educated people in Vienna nowadays. <laughs> the difference is that he never keeps it to himself. And with Bonaparte so close, they may be looking for scapegoats. You are staying? I believe so. Indeed. Yes, we are staying. 
The children were asking for you. What? The children. I was working. I know, but sure. What? Nothing. Mama! Hush, you're safe, darling. Don't wake Anna. You were dreaming. I thought it was a gun. What gun? In St. Francis Square, they put a big gun there. I, I saw it coming home from school. I'll stay here, Mama. Oh, you're all right. Hush, that's enough now. Don't go, Mama, don't go. Thing. You'll not have visitors. No, not even they'll find you, will you? <laughs> oh, it's cold. It's bloody freezing. Where do you want this lot? Hey! <whistles> this lot, where do you want them? Over there? Hey! No! No! Not near the window. It might be dangerous. I know it's all on the other side of the city at the moment, but you never know. If they should start shelling round here... What are they shelling now? Prater Gate. It's quite like the Petzlstrasse burning. What? Petzlstrasse. On fire. Mm. The French have a battery on the Schmittelberg. Shelling the walls of the Prater Gate. You know, make a hole in them so they can get inside. One of the lookouts reckoned he saw Bonaparte outside his tent about a league away. So now everyone's out with telescopes again. You know, if this war does nothing else, it'll make the fortunes of all the telescope makers in Vienna. What time do you want to eat? We'll get you something later. I'm not staying if the French get in, you know. I said I'm... What? If the French get in, I'm not staying. I'd bring you someone else, though, if I went. Save me breath. I'll get the rest. He's very bad today. You got a whistle? I followed the men who were moving your things. I 
followed the men who were moving your things. I thought you'd have left Vienna by now, for the children's sake. We're leaving tomorrow, that's why... What? Tomorrow. Come with us. Where are you going? I don't know yet. Franz is arranging something. You can't stay here. You heard Bonaparte had crowned himself emperor with full hereditary succession. As Franz said, so you see. Emperor. And crowned himself. Come with us. What time? Eight. Tomorrow morning. Well then? What? I said well then! Biden, Hoa Market. Mm, so the shelling hasn't reached that part of the city yet? There's to be a ceasefire at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. All civilians who want to may leave. Come with us. That's him. Slept with his clothes on all night, look. Herr Beethoven. Yeah. Bad news. Herr Haydn died in the night. Haydn? I've heard it just as I came along now. He was very old, wasn't he? This is Kistner I was telling you about yesterday. Kistner. I'm leaving, remember? The guns. Guns have stopped. Didn't you know? We've given in. We've surrendered. We've put up the white flag. The French, they're marching in this morning. Now, this is Kister. I thought you might like him instead of me. He's a student and he's very good. I don't need anyone. Now, forgive me. Forgive me. I'm sure you'll be an excellent servant. But... Who is going to look after you when I'm not here? I'll take care of myself. And your cooking. I'll eat out. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Now. That's all right, sir. Now, look, you know so much. What? Leave it. You need someone to get this place straight, all right? Just for a day or two. Now, he's a student and he needs the money. Oh, very well, very well. Uh, I'm off now. What time is it? About half past. Half past eight. La, 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 Student. Yes, sir. You have to speak up, you know. I'm deaf. Yes, I am a student. Yes, sir. How old are you? Fourteen. Why didn't you run away like Hoffman? They wouldn't let us out. Students' garrison, sir. Students? Garrison. A thousand students and artists formed a garrison to help the troops. They know who we are. I'm glad, though, in a way. Why? Well... You can tell me. Resistance. What would that achieve? Well, freedom. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not laughing at you. You won't achieve anything by force of arms. How, then? Listen. 
Is that? The French. You heard. Close the shutters. Close? Yes, close them. I'll light some candles. Work, work, work. Happy when we're young, because we look forward to our maturity. I would like to help you if I can. In what way? I don't know. Do you remember climbing trees as a boy? Big trees, I mean. Beech, elm, something like that. In the wind. Do you remember? And singing. I'm 34 and I'm only starting to understand what I'm doing. We do change. We evolve. But oh, the work. The work! Come, let us begin.